how would you interpret price action when you come to the market and this is all you see? For me personally, the first thing I do is, first thing I do before the market opens, that is on Sundays, is do a top-down analysis so I know the long-term direction for setting pairs. And for me, I trade just two pairs, GBP, USD, and Euro USD. So I try to do a top-down analysis so that during the week, I won't have to spend time doing a top-down analysis before I take a trade. So I've, I've already done that prior to this video. So we'll just start from the one hour time frame. So looking at the one hour time frame now, we can see that the market uh, broke structure or not broke structure, shifted in trend from a lower, from a downtrend to an uptrend. And I've been making a series of higher highs and higher lows ever since. So with this in mind, I cannot go to a lower time frame and see how I'll be able to catch a continuation to the upside. So going down to the 15 minutes time frame now, what we're going to try to do now is look at the previous low and uh, try to mark out any possible demand levels around that zone. And here we have the previous low. So what I'm going to do quickly now is just um, look at my session indicator to see when that low was formed because I like when my low is formed during the London. So when I'm buying, I like the low of the day to be formed during the London session. And when I'm selling, I like the high of the day to be formed during the London session. So you can see here, uh, the blue color indicates London session, right? So we formed the low of the day uh, during the London session. And I know now that we may have a pullback to this level down, then the rejection from this area before we have a continuation to the upside. So having that in mind, what I'll do next now is go down to the lower time frame to see if there are possible demand candles around this level here, because you can see from the 15 minutes time frame, we can't really make use of any information that we have here because the candles are uh has a lot of weeks. So when we go down to lower time frame, it shows you a clearer picture of the candles within this level here. So going down to the five minutes now, you can see we have a clean demand candle right here. This is a clean set to buy a candle. So you can just mark that out as a POI to go longs. And for me, I like to place my entries during the New York Open or the New York section. And it's just one of the ways I just have confidence with my setups. So if you want to be more precise, you can go to the lower time frame. You can look to a much more lower time frame because this is the five minutes. Now we're going to the three to see the candle formation within that level there. So now you can see on the three minutes time frame, we have a bit of imbalance here of a value gap. So I can just refine out my five minutes demand down to the end of the week or the fair value gap. So that is it for my POI to look for longs. So all I have to do now is just wait for the market to retrace back into that level before we now expect a reaction and a rejection to the upside. So that is all. But while waiting for this, you can as well catch a continuation move down. You can catch this continuation move down to your demand level. I don't recommend this because when I recommend when the market is uptrending, you just catch buys. But well, sometimes some clean opportunities might present themselves. And if you're confident enough, you can take them. So um, looking at the chart now, you can see that from this level here, you can see that we're done trading into our area of demand. And when I'm catching a continuation like this, I usually like to cut continuation during London Open. Like if I'm selling into a demand level, I really like to make my entries during the London Open um, and I have a specific time that I work with so I know when to be active in the charts. So now we have um, two supply levels. We have one here and we have one here. And I've made uh, some videos in the past concerning and this kind of scenarios and how one can be an inducement and fake you out and how one can make the right one. So if you have not checked it out, you can just go back to the other videos to check it out for further understanding. So going to the one minute now, let me just show you guys uh, what I mean. You can see on the one minute, we have a supply candle here, a clean by the cell candle, and a lot of people would have taken a cell from this level. If you took a cell from that level, let me show you what would have happened. 
Let me just quickly mark it out real quick. This will give you a 40 pips um, TP and a 2.7 pips stop loss. So let's see what happened real quick. And if you did that, boom, you would have got it taken out and the trade would have eventually gone in your direction, which would have obviously messed with your psychology a little bit, you know. Getting taken out is one thing. Then getting taken out and the trade now reversing after taking you out is 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 a different level. Like personally for me, those things they affect me. I don't know about you guys, but that's why I like to give my trades more room and look at the POI where I'm looking to buy or sell and make sure that I'm not missing anything. So why we had this was because this area here was just an inducement. Because if you look here, we still had some imbalance here that is left unfilled. And we had this unmitigated supply candle here. And that's where the market literally we traced into. And we had a reaction from there. And if you look at the time of the reaction, it was 9 a.m. in the morning, which is not a no good. So you guys see what I mean. So if if you just pay attention to time and uh try and do a proper analysis of your POIs, you'll be able to catch some decent entries every now and then. So now uh we we had a move down and just look at this now. Uh when we hit TP, we started some consolidation. So for me, what would have given me confidence to go long is if we have a shift in trend. And the last low is this one. So it move above this last low will signify a shift in trend. And I'll be looking to go long on this pair. So let's see if we have that. Let's go, let's just quickly go to the five minutes time frame. And just this is the zone. All right. So now we have um uh, so now we have a shift in trend. And look at the time we started making a pullback. Uh we started making a pullback around uh 12 p.m., which is 7 a.m. New York time, which is uh an hour or 50 minutes before the New York open. So the mistake I made that day was. Uh, this happened on Friday, this last Friday, and the mistake I made was taking this demand level. Of course, it was not a mistake, but we didn't have a retracement down to that level. And for me personally, what I like to do is when I'm uh, waiting for a pullback, I like to uh, expect the the retracement to be around the 50, sorry, the 61% and the 71% FIB level. That's why I like to enter personally. So I use Fibonacci. I also use uh, demand and supply candles. And I make sure that uh, the the candles are uh, going in line with my Fibonacci level. So this just li these little things just give me some confidence with, with my entries and all that stuff. So I had, so this was uh, the re reaction from this 1%. Sometimes you see the seven percent is much low because that's why I like to make my entries. So uh, let's see now. I placed my first entry from this level here. My stop was here, and I had my limits locked in. Like I just had my limit locked in, and I just left the charts. That's what happened that day. If you see here, this was my charts from that day. You can see this was on the April twenty eighth of April, and look at the time, uh, four past twelve. So that was like fifty four. 56 minutes before the New York Open. So I just had my limit locked in and I just left. And I didn't do these things that I usually do. Normally, I would have maybe uh, put my entry from the 61% or from the 71% and have my stop loss below the demand level. But I didn't do all that. I just put my uh, stop loss at the demand level and I just uh, forgot about the trade because I already had my limit locked in. And look what happened now when the New York section opened. You can see we had a claim reaction from the sub to one percent, and it mixed my entry by literally one pip. 
Like I missed out on all this because of one pip. Missed my entry by one pip and just made a reaction, thin reaction to the upside. And I, I think that day the market moved over 100 pips. So if I place my entry just one pip ahead of the demand level, of that I had a 9.8 pip stop loss instead of an 8 pip stop loss, which I had here. So it was just a one pip difference. And my failure to do this one thing make me miss out on all this move. So it was a clean one to 10, 9.5 pips stop loss and 100 pips gain. So um, with these things I just shared, I hope you can apply them with your own trading and hopefully it helps you on the long run. So this is just how I basically just navigate the market to get my entries. And if you want to see more of my setups day to day, anytime I have a setup, because most times when I have a setup, I post it on my Telegram or on my Instagram, mainly on my Instagram. I'm going to leave the link in my bio. And um, if you have any questions, you can just leave it in the comments or or text me on Instagram. Either way it works. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.